So you just ordered your brand new Ice River AL0 Home Alethium Miner, or it's on the delivery truck and being delivered any second now. Well, how exactly do you set this thing up? In today's video, we're going to unbox and set up the brand new Ice River AL0 Home Alethium Miner step by step for beginners just like you. Before we get too far into our video, I wanna give a huge shout out to the team over at Million Miner for sponsoring today's video and supplying the brand new Ice River AL0 for our beginner's guide today. If you guys are interested in nabbing any ASIC miner, maybe an Alethea miner, go over to millionminer.com. You can check out, they have a multitude of different Alethea miners over there and they have the exact Ice River AL0 that we will be unboxing and walking through step-by-step step in today's video. Go check out millionminer.com today via the link in the video description. All right, so before you go opening up the box, pump the brakes. You need something first that's super important, an Alethium wallet. Yes, you need a place to store the Alethium after you start mining it with your brand new AL0. So go over to Alethium Org, the official website for the Alethium project. Go up to the top to Essentials and go down to Wallets. You will now have three different wallet options. You can download an actual wallet onto your computer. Hopefully it's a secure computer, something separate from your day-to-day -day desktop computer. Or an extension wallet that'll exist within Chrome or Firefox, kind of up in the upper right-hand corner. Or finally, you can get an Alethium wallet for Android or iOS. Download the wallet of choice and you're gonna need your receiving address before we move forward. So go ahead, pause the video and do that first. All right, so now the fun part. Let's unbox our brand new AL0. So let's get started here. Feel free to follow along. This will only take a few minutes to get done, but is also a ton of fun, especially if this is your first miner. Awesome. Congratulations. This is a great home miner to get started. So let's open up our box here. See what is inside. All right, so first thing we're gonna look at is our power cable. So we have a normal US-based power cable here, typical three-prong setup. We also have your power brick, very similar to a laptop power brick. So to get started, we're just gonna go ahead and undo our little twisty tie here and we'll discard that and we're now going to take the three prong and plug it in and now you have pretty much a typical laptop charger we're going to put that aside for a minute and we're going to pull out our brand new alethium miner i know you're excited because i am so here she is we'll give a quick little swing tour of this unit we do have a sticker right here ice river AL0, flipping it around. This is where we're gonna go ahead and plug in that power cable that we were just talking about. You do have your MAC address over here as well. Rotating it around, you have your model as well as a serial number on there. And finally, we have an ethernet port. Unfortunately, this unit does not support wireless. Hopefully you planned accordingly. This is actually a reset button and these are two indicator lights. You won't have to worry about them unless you need to reset the unit. And finally, a USB port, which is great if you want to add on the top side, you can add a cooling fan to the top of this here. There's four actual holes to add one to it and you can nab and plug it in directly into the USB port because this thing does get very hot. If you're looking for one of those fans, I'll link one directly down below if you're interested. Now on the bottom, it has two fans as well. These fans only come on, I think between 80 to 85 Celsius, so they will not be running all the time. Don't be concerned. However, these fans don't really do much, so I highly do recommend that you do put a fan on the very top of your unit and plug it into the USB port. I'm going to link a video by Greater Good Mining who has tested this out with a thermal gun and does show that you do get better hash rate with the fan on top plugged directly into the USB port. So check that out directly down below. Huge shout out to Greater Good Mining for putting in the time and effort on that video. So let's get plugged in here. We're going to pull over our power cable and plug directly in. 
And then on the flip side here, we're going to plug in our ethernet port. Now we're just going to use a traditional ethernet cable. This does not come with your AL0. You're just gonna plug in, you'll hear it click, and we're gonna plug in to our router. You may have a home switch or an extender or something of that sort, but it needs to be plugged in and getting ethernet. The other end here, we're gonna plug directly into a wall socket off to the side here. And guess what? We are halfway done already. So right away, you're going to see the lights start to come on on your miner, as well as the ethernet lights as well. Now, what's the best way to kind of finagle this thing? Well, some people may argue sitting it just like this is best. Others may argue putting it up on its side is best. I personally like them up on their side because I like the fans having some type of breathability. Now, don't be concerned. A lot of these ice river units, after they start mining, get very hot to the touch. So do not get too concerned about that. That is very normal. They actually use this design, the entire exoskeleton of this is used as a heat sink to dissipate the heat. So what's next? Well, let's jump over to our computer. I'm gonna show you how to find the IP address of your Ice River AL0 and we can get it configured and up and mining. Okay, so you have your Ice River AL0 plugged in with power and also with ethernet. Your next step is to find your miner on your network. Well, it's actually pretty easy. Ice River has a tool for this. So if you go over to iceriver.io slash tutorial, I'll put a link directly down below, on the right hand side, there is a batch processing tool. Sounds very fancy. Well, at the very top, we're gonna click on the English download option and we're going to download and open that program. And well, this is exactly what it looks like. And all we have to do is click on IP report. It's a button on the right hand side and it's got a little window that pops up. And let's go ahead and slide back. And all you need to do is press the button right on the side of the miner once. So we're gonna press that and bam, there it is. There is the IP address for our miner. So write that down. Okay, so you have the IP address of your miner. Go to the very top of your browser, which is the URL or address bar and type that in. Mine was 192.168.86.50 and hit enter. Now, you should see a screen just like this. Keep in mind your IP address is not gonna be the same as mine. Make sure you put in your IP address. Once this comes up, the name is just admin, A-D-M-I-N. For the password, it's gonna be 12345678. I know, not very secure. 12345678 and click log in. You are now accessing your Ice River AL0. But hold up. It's mining, which is awesome, but not to our wallet. Now, if you remember, the very first step I asked you guys to do before unboxing was to set up your Lithium wallet and copy your receiving address. Make sure you have that for the next few steps. So our next step is we need a pool to mine to. Our miner is kind of like a worker and it needs a manager to give it jobs, which is where the pool comes in. The pool also pays you after your worker has done its job. So over at miningpoolstats.stream, you can search for a lithium in the upper left-hand corner and see a long list of all the different pools out there. Do your research and find the pool that is best for you. For today's example video, I'm going to use viper.net. I've been using this pool more and more and really do enjoy it, especially with all the features. So once we're over here on viper.net, and I'll put a link directly down below, Click under Elithium on the right hand side under Start Mining. Once you come over here, it's going to give you a list of all the different Elithium servers or stratums. Don't be overwhelmed. Pick the one that's closest to you. And when you pick the one that's closest to you, you just go ahead and click on it. For me, it's Southeast Georgia. Now, what I want to grab here is on the top left hand side, it gives a really long address, stratum plus TCP colon slash slash and a bunch of information. There's a little copy option to the right. We're going to click that. That's going to copy this address to our clipboard. Next, we're going to go back over to our miner. And the second option on the left hand side is mining settings. Click on that. Now, there's a whole bunch of information listed here. Don't be overwhelmed. Actually, delete it all. So we're going to click in here 
and delete all this information. You don't need to write it down. You don't need to save it. Once that's done, go to the pool one, right click and go to paste. Pool two, right click and paste. Pool three, right click and paste. Now, do you remember in our first step, we talked about going and writing down or jotting down somewhere your address for your lithium receiving address. That is your wallet address. I have mine over here on the other screen as a notepad file. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste that right into worker one. So look at that, it put that right in there. Now, you are going to go ahead and have to give this a name. You're going to identify this, especially if you're one of the lucky people that have several of these units. So we're gonna put a dot here at the very end of our address and I'm going to do AL0 underscore 50. I always like to name it with the model and then do an underscore and the IP address, which was ended in 50. Once that's done, I'm gonna select everything in this field and I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it again into the second one underneath of it and paste it again. Finally, under password, I'm just gonna put an X in all three fields. So X, X, and X. Once that's completed, hit save. You see that first save button? Click save right there. That's going to go ahead and apply these settings. Second, make sure that you restart your miner with the restart my button in the bottom right hand corner. Be careful not to click restore factory settings in red. Click the blue restart. And well, let's check back in about 10 minutes. If you guys are an avid home miner and you're looking for an alternative to the laptop power brick, the team over at gpucables.com actually sent this over to me. And this is a barrel plug that you would plug right here on the back side of your unit that goes into a traditional six pin that you would use right here with a breakout board. So if you're running a number of these units and you don't wanna have a whole bunch of power bricks everywhere, this is a great avenue to go. Go over and check them out over at gpucables.com and tell them the hobbyist miner sent you. All right, so it has been 22 minutes. Yes, I know, I said 10, time got away from us, but I definitely would give this miner 10 to 15 minutes after the restart to get up and fully hashing. Now, this number will absolutely fluctuate. And as you can see here on our graph, you can see that at some points it is up over 400 and other points it is directly down below. But what truly matters is the hash rate at the pool. And this is where giving it significant amount of time is important. So let's go back over to the pool. And this is my Alethium dashboard. Now, if you're like, whoa, how did you get here? Come to the very, very top where it says search by your mining address and just paste in your wallet address there. And look, you can see mine came up. I'm just gonna click on it and bam, this is your dashboard. This is actually what you wanna look at and what you wanna monitor. Because remember I talked about the pool being like a manager and providing your worker jobs, it also pays your worker and it really comes down to what the pool sees for the hash rate so here there's a lot of information here but let's look at a few things and so we scroll down I actually have two workers and remember I talked about having if you have multiple workers it's good to label them as well as with the IP address I have an AL box 2 over here as well as the AL0 which you can see the AL0 at the bottom is currently showing an average of 448 giga hash so don't be concerned about what you see over here on the miner side it's more important to see what the hash rate is showing at the pool now there is an email notification button here right at the bottom i probably would click on that and fill out your email address so if the pool stops seeing your miner like it goes offline or there's a network issue or a power issue when you're not around it will email you and tell you that that worker is offline Finally, there's a lot of great information up here at the top. First off, you have unpaid. Keep an eye on that. That is what is currently sitting on the pool, waiting to go ahead and be paid out to you. And your next question may be, well, when do I get my lithium? When do I get paid? Well, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little gear. Click on that gear, and it's gonna ask you for a little bit of information. The first thing you can fill out is what you want the minimum amount of lithium to be paid out. For me, I have mine set at 250 lithium. then it's gonna go ahead and pay me. Now, there's a spot there for your IP address, and that will validate that it's actually you and not someone else or a bad actor 
looking to go ahead and change your payout amounts. So make sure you put in your full IP address. That's the external IP address of where you're located. You can use all different websites. I like to use ipchicken.com that will go ahead and give me that external IP address. You can paste that in there and then you can save those settings. So it's up to you. I don't recommend you get paid out for every single lithium every single time. That's going to be multiple payments a day with multiple transactions. I would rather do one big payout every once in a while, especially if you're going to hodl your lithium. Well, guys, that comes to the end of our video. I really hope that this video going through step by step how to set up your Ice River AL0 was helpful and informational. Leave your comments down below. Was this video helpful? And if you have additional questions, leave them down below. I'll try to answer as many as possible. Lots of links in the video description as we talked about. Lots of websites to check out. And well, that's going to wrap things up, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. What's up, guys? Sorry to interrupt your video, but want to keep you in the know. So are you new at mining or you're just looking to get step into it? You're not sure what hardware you want to buy. You're not sure what build you want to do. Need some help? Maybe you're building your first mining rig and you literally need help step by step installing Hive OS. Maybe you're so far away from mining, but you're looking at it and you just need somebody to bounce some ideas off of. Well, I offer one on one calls with the community and I've done boatloads, some really cool ones. I've helped people set up ASIC miners in the Dominican Republic. I've helped someone troubleshoot their very first GPU mining rig. I've chatted with a guy looking to open up a farm and just wanted a sounding board. I've helped someone else build and set up and configure their brand new Caspa miners. Well, I'm here to help and I'd love to work with you. If you guys need one on one help, I offer it and I love doing it. So there's a link directly down below to thehobbyistminer.io. Go over there and schedule some time with me. All right, back to the video.